Job Search Strategies at Work, Episode 19, Won't You Be My Neighbor? That's what I'm entitling this episode. Um, Okay, so funny story happened to me. A couple different things. Uh, I was driving to uh, work, where I work at, and I was at a gas station, uh, used a restroom, and he needed a ride down the street, and he's a truck driver. Okay, so I took him at his word, you know, all that. Took him down the street, only two blocks away. He gave him a ride down there, and um, just chatted with him a little bit, asked him about, I was, of course I asked him qualifying questions like, oh, what type of rig do you have? Um, you know, just qualify the person, right, basically. Uh, turns out, um, you know, obviously he's a truck driver. I verified that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I drive uh, myself, not a truck, but I drive, uh, I've driven across the states a couple times. So I, I understand uh, how that works and, and the importance of a truck driver. And that's another thing, right? If you're, uh, if you're looking for a J-O-B and you're, I think it's like 25 is the minimum age to do that. And you're just like, I need another job. Um, CDL, a lot of these companies will hire you to drive for a, a you know a rig or pickup or what do you call it a, uh, um, a semi tractor trailer right you haul our cargo from one location to the other goods and services whatever they uh, whatever they have in the back of their their truck there and I know some of them they have the trucks are in the back they got these uh, uh, beds or whatever so those are for the people that or long haul where they stay in the back of the bed and then you see ones that don't have the the bed or whatever I think those are for the the short hauls maybe a day trip or something like that you know um, yeah and and how you know how can you tell if because uh, he w- he was telling me how you can tell the difference between a person who has their own truck and a person who rides or drives to somebody else usually the the truck is uh, if, if it's a logo on the back of the, the trailer, it'll be if it's a different logo than on a truck. Um, that's most likely either they drive for um, they're like a they drive for another company or they have their own rig. You know, um, not like you see you've probably seen on the hot road where they they have like Schneider. I think that's orange. I think that's a that's one, and you'll it'll match. Um, and if that's a pretty large company, you know, most likely they're, they're driving for that company. He said he travels about 600 miles a day, roughly, something like that. Um, depends really on what is what is he hauling, right? And uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I, I said, I was, how much do you make, you know, a year or a, a month, right? A, a year. He's like anywhere from 40 to 48,000 a, a year. So I was like, that's pretty good money. So there you have it. You have, uh, so that's one cool part. Let me tell you the other cool part. Stopped in this um, Olive Mediterranean restaurant who is just going to happen to move their store uh, to location uh, a couple of days from now. So I'm in there and, you know, of course, you probably don't know this about me. I love garlic. I love um, chicken shawarma, which is like, it's awesome. It's got this. This flatbread, or what do you call it? Not kubus, but more of a flatbread. Uh, not a chapati, like just like an Indian. It's like just a, a. Although I think in Indian they call them, I think they call them kormas, I believe, not shawarma korma. Anyway, uh, so basically it's like uh, flatbread, and you have um, like a garlic paste, which is uh, yogurt. They mix yogurt, garlic, la- uh, lemon. Uh, forget the other uh, ingredient in that. Anyway, that serves as like your base, your garlic paste or your garlic sauce, basically. So good. Oh my gosh, so good. And then you have, uh, and then chicken, right? Like grilled chicken. And then if they make it like they make it, they put uh, French fries and pickles on that on that deal, and then you eat it, and it's oh so good. Yeah. And the more garlic, the better. If if you're me. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's super, super delicious. So, okay, so I digress. I'm there, I'm talking to this gal. Uh, her name is Chiba. 
And um, so Sheba has a brother. He works in construction, has his own company and all that. Uh, you know, long story short, um, I want, I'm, I'm curious myself about some of the construction because I want to get into a few uh, people have a home they just built. Well, I want to be the one to put their networking in. You know, I, I don't know, um, from what I've seen anyway, looking at houses myself, the, uh, the carpenters or the people that do that, they put their Cat 5 in, they they put it in, yeah, but they're not thinking like a, a, a technician. They're not thinking, or rather, a, somebody who's doing the internet. They're not thinking like an, a geek or an IT geek. They just put it in. It's cable to them. They're just running the cable. So when they, when they run this cable, they run it in such a way that it doesn't um, it doesn't leave room for improvement when they need to upgrade cables or um, design changes to the home. For instance, uh, whenever fiber becomes like the new thing, you got to pull that CAD 5 out or CAD 6 or whatever. Well, that's, if, if you pull it and how they, how they put it in, it's kind of at an angle sometimes, so when you pull it, you might as well just cut it and pull it from the other end because it just ran kind of, it's not ran straight line where you can just easily loop it over and pull it back. It's not, it's not fluid like that. The other thing is um, they're not taking into consideration when they put up these things like a closet. Uh, maybe the homeowner wants to put a server room in, you know, in the future. Well, put up, put up, put up, uh, Put up the Cat 5 or Cat 6 or Cat 7 in an area where, um, you know, all come into one location. So you, basically your internet, your modem, whatever, from your ISP, they call them the, the dirty fiber, if you will, that's what they call it, comes into the house, DMARC point, whatever. It comes into the house, it comes in one location. And then from there, you disperse it through the house. Uh, I know that doesn't, people, a lot of people don't have that or whatever, but... I want to do that for a, a construction company where I, you know, they, uh, right before the walls are put in, no, before the sheetrock's put in, I come in and I run the Cat 5, Cat 6, whatever, and, and think like, okay, if I'm, I'm the end user here, I'm the, I'm the person sitting down going on the internet, I want to put a, I want to put it in a place where um, it's going to be easy access to the customer. Or they're putting in a server, you know, in the future they can have a, a one location point um, that's easily, you know, because like maybe uh, maybe the wife of the house doesn't want the modem, you know, blinking lights or whatever in the, uh, in the uh, living room. Maybe she wants it out of the way because it's, oh, that's an annoying light or whatever it is. Things like that. They want it in the server closet. Okay, I can do that type of stuff. At any rate, I got his email. I'm going to contact him. Good, good stuff. So, uh, well, I guess the point is on that one, you just never know who you're gonna meet or who uh, you're gonna contact, you know, and how much, you know, who can give you business. Like for instance, I'm planning on talking to this person and getting some knowledge from him, maybe even getting a strategy uh, from him and how I can grow my, uh, you know, grow, get more money. I can, you know, okay, these are the things I need to talk say uh, to the company or these are the things I need to look out for when I talk to a construction company because there may be a reason why no, I don't I don't know that anybody doesn't do it but a reason why that people uh, that don't know about it you know maybe they don't have this type of service offered I don't know uh, the other thing is um, you know I can give him some knowledge maybe that he needs some IT stuff knowledge or whatever and uh, it's just a, a give back and forth information, which is really, really cool. Yeah, you just never know who you're going to meet. The other uh, thing that happened, right, was really cool, was uh, we had some vendors come in. And vendors, what that means is um, they installed a product. We, we bought a product from a company, and they came in. Well, I guess they're more like, uh, what do you call it, field, field reps, I guess you'd call it. That's probably the better term. Anyway, there's three of them, and uh, one of the individuals, his name is Adam. So I started chatting with, I, I didn't even know the person, but I just overheard him talking to one of the other colleagues, and I was like, I just heard, okay, you know, from him talking, you know, he, he said, like, some geek things, you know, like, whoa, I know that, 
free, he thought it was free NAS. He's talking about the free NAS of the other, so the colleague, like I know what that is. And he's talking about storage. Yeah, I know what that is. Open source storage. So my ears just perked up, like, oh, okay, wow. This guy's, this guy's, uh, and obviously that's open source. So obviously he's a geek, because only geeks talk about this stuff. Uh, you know, when when they're just working. Anyway, started talking to him. Come to find out, this guy's a true on geek. He's like a true on like goes at home like basically the, the term I'm going to say geek especially just improving your craft it's working on your craft w- whatever you do it uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be IT but whatever you do you know you're working on your craft you know you're building you're building more um, knowledge and what's cool about that was talking to him um, you know I, I told him about Joe's data center I don't know if you guys know but Joe's data center it's like joesdatacenter.com, I think it's a website. Uh, anyway, so I was looking for um, a rack space. I use them for, and they're okay. And AWS is okay. And you can choose your own dedicated uh, server. You can put Ubuntu on it. You can put uh, VMware ESXi host on it. You can put Windows, whatever. So I, I have one myself. And I paid, I've had it for a couple months now, and that's what I use for my labs now. And um, so it's like, I got a coupon actually, $15, $15 off. So this month I only paid $15 because I got a lower ES6 host. So what is my host like? Uh, 8 gig of RAM, I think, uh, two terabyte hard drive, uh, five, five dedicated IPs. So I'm just talking to him about this, about this, about this stuff. and. Uh, He's like, that's so cool. And yeah, man, you know. And then he's telling me about this other thing because we started talking, you know, of course, uh, at, at lunch because we went to lunch together. A group of us, actually. So he tells me about this product called Unraid. Um, website is um, lime-technology.com. And, you know, it's basically like a, uh, you have one, one, as I understand it, going to do some more research on it but as i understand it, it's one hard uh one parity hard drive and then the rest are raid drives so basically you can imagine you have on if it's a visual on your left you have the parity drive or the one that um basically is like the the failover if you will and on the right hand side you have you know three four whatever drives and if one of the drives goes down on the right hand side you just hot swap it, pull it out, done. You don't have to reconfigure your rate. Uh, that's the beauty of it, really. Um, anyway, he gave me some good ideas, right? Adam did. And it's just really cool. So I guess the whole point of this is just, um, you know, when you're, a, when you're a geek and you're uh, working on your craft, whatever that is, or if you're just working on your craft, you know, um, you, you know you're going to get people in your life that you're gonna you're gonna get to talk to about the stuff who are interested in something similar to you, than um, the stuff that you are. So you take that knowledge that you're getting from the other person, um, and you uh, you build on your own. You know, it completes the puzzle basically. You're completing a puzzle when you when you talk to other people that are like-minded like yourself, or not like-minded for that matter. But when I was talking to Adam, I just it. My eyes uh, became, it just became more, okay, I didn't know about that. Now I know about it. So I'm going to go home, of course, and play around with it and see how it works. And just more knowledge. So how, how does that work? How, how, why is that even important to this podcast, right? I'll just tell you why. When you talk to somebody and they give you information, you know, if you go after it and learn um, something about it, you never know if that may be a job that you can get or that could be something in your career path over here something uh, you talk to someone about something unrelated to what you're doing and then they have this great idea they have this this thing they're doing or um, something you know they may know of something oh I didn't think about that and then it sparks your your interest and you Google it, and oh wow, there's a market for that. I didn't know that. Wow, holy cow! I didn't know it. I had no idea. 
that can actually earn money doing that, whatever that thing is. Um, so you never know. I know I've told this in the podcast before, but you just never know um, when you're gonna get you're gonna meet somebody who's just gonna like um, just give you some great ideas. And it's I mean it's happened to me all it happens to me all the time. By the way, you know I'll, I'll just it'll take me down a rabbit hole basically to find information or find knowledge. I mean this podcast is based that's how I learned this podcast or how I started it was hey uh, <laughs> listen to some pod other people talk about hey starting a podcast like well that's really cool and here I am so uh, thanks everybody for viewing this uh, or listening to this podcast and have a great uh, day